two, we will focus on how to add dissolved carbonate species and dissolved organic matter to a visual minted problem. Uh, these two forms, of course, both uh, uh, carbonate and organic matter can be quite important uh, uh, species in waters and be able to complex uh, different cations, for example. Uh, if we start with dissolved carbonates, there are different ways of adding carbonate to a problem, and it all depends on how you measure it. And uh, we can, uh, uh, before we start uh, looking at these different options, we can uh, connect to the first lesson by using the same input file that we created them. So if we, this is the one that uh, we uh, made, uh, we have the PHO 6.4. And we also have, if you click this view edit list, you can see that we defined calcium 10 milligrams per liter and sulfate 20 milligrams per liter. Okay, so calcium can, or carbonate, sorry, carbonate can be um, determined as carbonate or as carbon. Uh, for example, using a POC analyzer where you get an input in the form of DIC, uh, which is dissolved inorganic carbon. So if you have carbonate measured in this way, uh, you can uh, click this uh, uh, list and then you find here DIC. DIC is actually dissolved inorganic carbon. So if you have it, uh, for example, uh, five milligrams per liter of that that you have measured, you just uh, enter five here and then you click add to list and then you have a, a defined carbon or carbonate in this way. If we run this problem, you'll see that we get a carbonate, of course, as a result. And uh, well, we have both bicarbonate, as you can see here, and carbonate. Uh, and uh, if we click on view species distribution, you see that uh, of our DIC, about 53% was present as bicarbonate. 46% as uh, carbonic acid. Okay, so, so this is one common way of actually giving uh, or, or analyzing uh, ca uh, carbonate in a water sample. Another one is if we have um, a measurement of alkalinity, uh, which is mainly different carbonate forms and mainly bicarbonate. Uh, so before we do that, we need to get rid of this DIC uh, component, and then we enter a new uh, menu, which we can find up here under parameters. Uh, and the specify alkalinity option will take us to a new menu where you specify alkalinity. Uh, there are the four different options for uh, alkalinity, uh, milligram per liter uh, bicarbonate, milligrams per liter carbonate, and a calcium carbonate and also milli equivalence per liter. So it depends on what unit was given in your analytical report, so to speak. Uh, now we can, can take this example. If we have measured five milligrams of, of uh, uh, bicarbonate, so we enter the value of five there, and then basically we click OK. But before we do that, we can see there are two different options for alkalinity calculation. I will not go through these options now. I can just say that they give you very similar results, except for when you have quite low values of the alkalinity, then they differ uh, a little bit. Uh, but we use normal in this case. Um, you can see, you look in the help file for more information of these different options. Then we click OK. So now we have uh, added alkalinity. And if you click this uh, component list again, you can see here that we now have carbonate as a component, but with four stars. And this is a special component when we have alkalinity uh, defined. And you can see here uh, below the table, uh, the explanation or uh, the legend for these uh, four stars. So this is a user specified total alkalinity it does not correspond to the total carbonate concentration. In fact, the figure you see here is not the same as the one we entered. We entered five milligrams per liter, and now suddenly it's 4.91 something. So it might be tempted to, to uh, delete this and replace it with five, but don't do that. 
because that will give you the wrong result. This is a correction that the program has made because we defined it in terms of alkanality. So just let it be like this. We go back to the main menu and we run the program again. And uh, now we have these different carbonate forms again. We get really similar distribution between bicarbonate and, and, and carbonic acid. Um, so, well, it's simply a different way of getting uh, the dissolved carbonate species. Uh, one interesting thing before we move on to a third option, and that is if you look at uh, the gases menu that appeared here, you will get uh, the calculated pressure of CO2 in this water. So the program is calculated from the uh, alkalinity that we gave and from the pH, uh, CO2 pressure of approximately two times 10 to the power of minus three atmospheres, which is around maybe six, seven, eight uh, times the atmospheric pressure, which is quite normal for, for uh, um, the natural water. Okay, so this was um, how to add alkalinity, and uh, we can uh, then move on to the third different alternative. Before we do that, we need to get rid of the alkalinity. So we click no there in the alkalinity menu, and then we actually also need to remove uh, the carbonate component from here. So now it's gone, and uh, the third alternative is if you know or maybe have an estimate of the CO2 pressure, you can also that way give get the value of the dissolved carbonates in the water. So uh, then you need to go into this gases menu and you specify a gas. The default alternative is actually CO2 and uh, this consists of two different text boxes. The first text box here you have the atmospheric CO2 pressure, and this value here, 3.8 times 10 to the minus four atmospheres, that was approximately the value, well, 15 years ago. And now it's higher, as you might know, I think it's 4.1 or 4.2 times 10 to the minus uh, four atmospheres. But, uh, well, we can leave it at this at the moment. The second text box, here is uh, the value you have uh, that defined as a multiple of this first value. So if you have a CO2 pressure two times the atmospheric pressure, you uh, and change this text box to two, and so uh, the final CO2 pressure will be the product of these two, this one times this one. And now we can click out here. Now CO2 is uh, present in, in uh, the problem. Uh, here you can also see that uh, if you have another gas uh, in, in your system, you, you can enter this here as well. Then you need to change uh, the alternative here to uh, choose a gas among another of the gases in the database. Okay, we go back to the main menu. Uh, so now we can run the program again and we get sort of similar uh, set of results. Uh, but now, of course, the, the uh, CO2 pressure is fixed at this particular value that we defined. This atmospheric pressure times 2, you, you get 7.6 times 10 to the minus 4 atmospheres. And the uh, different concentrations of bicarbonate and carbonate and so on will reflect that situation. Okay, so this was a little bit about how to add different carbonates. Um, then there, we also have organic matter which can be quite important for, for example, uh, metals. If you have metals in the water, because this, uh, this old organic carbon can complex different metals quite efficiently. Uh, so uh, how to add this old organic matter to the problem? Well, you uh, use actually this component list to do that. And if you go in here, you see actually three different components uh, for DOC. So you have to choose one of them. And these, three represent different uh, sub-models for handling dissolved organic matter, which is, as you might know, I mean, quite complex in structure and also very heterogeneous. So it's not easy to treat it with a traditional, in a traditional chemical equilibrium model. Um, the first model here, the Gaussian DOM model, which is a rather simple model, uh, is inherited from the old MinTech A2 program 
but it's not used much any longer. Um, so therefore, in practice, you have to choose between one of these two, the Nika Donnan model or the SHM, the Stockholm Humic model. Uh, so we will start here with the Stockholm Humic model alternative. Uh, so if we have, uh, let's say that we have three milligrams per liter of DOC that we have measured. Uh, so then we um, simply enter three milligrams per liter and then add it to the list. And that's actually all we need to do if we are happy with, with the uh, um, different default assumptions and the default parameter values that uh, is, uh, we have assumed for, for this uh, particular model. Now, if we want to change something or review these different uh, values, we click Edit DOC Parameters, and that will take us to a menu which in turn cont contains links to other more detailed day, um, parameters for acid-base parameters and um, the log uh, case for different complexes it might be for. But if there is one uh, parameter that uh, you might want to change sometimes is this one uh, this one up here or these two up here uh, the first one is ratio of active DOM to DOC uh, that is 1.65 and the second one the percent of active DOM that is FA DOM this organic matter FA is folic acid so this means basically that all of the DOC that we have in the water we assume that to be Fulvic acid, or at least the part that is active, and we don't have any humic acid in the water. We can change this to another value. Let's say if you have 80% here, it means that 80% is, is fulvic acid and 20% is humic acid. We can also change this ratio up here. Uh, this actually means uh, because uh, we assume, or the program assumes, that. Uh, this old organic matter consists of 50 weight percent carbon. It mean, this uh, figure means that we assume that 82.5% 82 of the dissolved organic matter is active with respect to proton and methyl binding. Uh, this figure has been, uh, well, well, there are different estimates for this by different authors. If you would like to change this, you can do that here. Um, and save it also as the default value. But now we are happy with this. We, we uh, uh, escape from this menu, go back to the main menu. We have three milligrams per liter of DOC. And then we run the program and then we get the output. And now you can note uh, that um, uh, we get a number of different funny looking species here that start with a slash. Uh, and then we have FA, for example. The slash is, is something sort of characteristic for this uh, Stockholm Humic model. So this basically is, uh, well, this re will represent different organically bound species. FA stands for phthalic acid. And you can see here, for example, FA2CA. This means that we have calcium that has been complexed to phthalic acid or two, actually two groups, functional groups which can be either two carboxylate groups or one carboxylate and one phenylate group. You have also an alternative here where calcium is bound to just one functional group. Uh, and then we have G here stands for gel. And so this is calcium that is weakly electrostatically bound in the gel phase of this organic matter. Uh, okay, so uh, in this case we can see well, you can see the concentrations here, and if you go to the species distribution page, you can see that, um, well, there's not a lot of the calcium that is organically bound in this, particular, according to the model. So you sum this value 1.3 for this uh, species and 1.5 for this complex, you get 2.8% approximately. And that is the proportion of calcium that the model assumes is organically bound. So not a lot, but Calcium is not very strongly bound to organic matter in any case. Uh, th this percentage will be a lot higher for uh, metals such as copper or lead. Uh, okay, so that was uh, uh, some. Uh, you can also look at one more thing. You can, if we go to the equilibrated mass distribution, uh, the program has also separated out the part of calcium here that is bound to DOM from the inorganic 
forms of calcium. And so this is another way of just looking at how important these dissolved organic matter bound forms of, of calcium, for example, is. So now we go back. So that was the Stockholm Jovic model. We can repeat the same procedure for the Nika Donald model and see if it's different. Uh, then we can simply go to the component list and you can delete DOC from this list. And then it deletes DOC and a lot of other, you could maybe see that there were other strangely looking components here. Uh, these components were needed for the, for the DOC model to work. But now they are all gone and then we can add the Nikodonen model instead. Uh, so la let's see that we have three milligrams per liter of DOC as well. It all works exactly the same way. You have the same sort of parameters here. Again, you can change this if you want to. We go back. Uh, and now if you click edit list, yeah, it's the same here. It, you have DOC, but you also have some other funny looking components. They are needed for the program to work, so don't delete them. Uh, so then we can run, run again. And you get another set of results, but which are rather similar, but, but these organically bound uh, species look different for this model. So for the Nikodana model, you see this parenthesis six, uh, strangely looking um, species here. These are actually weakly bound, uh, electrostatically bound uh, species uh, in the gel phase of the organic. And then if you go down here, you can see different uh, complexes, which starts with Fa, which is for phthalic acid. So here we have calcium that is complex to group one of phthalic acid, which is the carboxylic groups. And Fa2 here is phenolic groups that are bound to calcium. Okay, uh, so what about uh, how many percent of calcium was bound? Well, you can see here that uh, we have this uh, 6 calcium 2 plus 5.2 percent and then we have the complex 0.2 percent so all in all 5.4 percent so this means that according to the Nikodonen model calcium was bound slightly more strongly uh, than, than the Stockholm Jovic model indicated but anyway it's largely the same type of results so that was it so we go back and so well I think that's all um, we have time for in this lesson but this, uh, uh, I hope that you got more input in how to define uh, carbonate and the solid organic matter. So thank you for, for now.